the last tool that I want to focus on today is SlideShare. Now SlideShare is basically a place where you can upload slides, PowerPoint slides, Google slides, Keynote slides, whatever presentation software you happen to use, you can upload them to SlideShare. In fact, if you were to turn a document, even a Word document, into a PDF, it'll actually allow you to upload it to SlideShare. And this can be very useful if you are presenting at a professional development session or as part of a continuing ed credit or at a conference where instead of making copies of your slides or getting people's email to send them a copy or asking them to email you so you can send them a copy you can just post them to SlideShare and then include the address of where the slide deck is located as the last slide of your actual presentation. Similarly some faculty will use it to post PowerPoint slides or slides from uh, their teaching sessions, their various classes that they have. Uh, while you could do this in Canvas and um, just leave them there, once the students have graduated from us, they lose access to that content, whereas putting them in SlideShare leaves them open and available to the broader public so that students could continue to have access to them as they transition to being alumni for us. So, one of the things about SlideShare is it has been bought actually by LinkedIn. So it's connected directly to your LinkedIn account. So if you don't already have an existing account and you didn't create it before the LinkedIn acquisition, when you go to sign up, it'll ask you to essentially go in through, if you haven't joined LinkedIn, it'll ask you to join LinkedIn. And if you have joined LinkedIn, it will ask you to sign in using your LinkedIn account. Now, when you get here, you'll notice you have the option of logging in with LinkedIn, logging in with Facebook, or logging in with your SlideShare account. And if you were to click on sign up for a SlideShare account, it takes you back to this screen again. So you get kind of that circular logic that's there. So essentially, that link there is absolutely a useless link now since they've been bought out by LinkedIn. This here is only useful if you already had created a SlideShare account before the purchase. So with the option of logging in with LinkedIn or logging in with Facebook, as professionals, I would recommend connecting it to your LinkedIn account. So in order to do that, we're going to click on login with LinkedIn here. And we're going to get this little window here that asks us for our LinkedIn email and our password that we use for LinkedIn. And you can see here's the full screen. And if you are new to LinkedIn, so if you haven't had LinkedIn yet, you can click join now. So I'm just going to enter my information and then I'm going to log in here. So now, as you can see, I've logged in to SlideShare. And you can tell because I, when I hover over this little icon here you can see it gives me my account and I can actually do a bunch of things. So the first thing I want to do is go into where you see my name here. And that will allow me to essentially customize my account per se. So you can see here now um, you know, right now it's just I've got zero slideshare, zero followers, zero clipboards and my image here is you know that's my picture here so I'm gonna wanna change those types of things and you can see it says I don't I don't have anything uploaded yet so it asks me here's some ideas of things that I could upload uh, so this is basically my profile and as I find people you can see they're suggesting people that might be of interest to me that I might be or I, that I might be interested in following and my guess is, is these are people that they've identified based upon the things that SlideShare already knows about me from my LinkedIn account. So right now I'm not going to worry about following people, although as you find people that are posting interesting things you can go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into account settings and you can see I've got a option to do 
uh, certain things under my account settings, but also I have profile details. And if I click on the little arrow here, it gives me some options on things I can do in my profile details. So I'm going to start looking at my personal details. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to upload my image. And so the personal details will allow you to add your image, add some information about yourself, because right now it doesn't pull any of the information over from LinkedIn. So you want to be able to go in and add those types of things in here. Uh, so I'm going to go through and fill out my profile here, and I'm going to pause the video while I'm doing that, and then once I'm done, I'm going to come back. So as you can see, I've successfully updated my profile, and I've added in just some of the general information that I want to put in there. You'll notice that here at the top, it asks me for an account type, and here is a bunch of different options that you've got here. Um, for us, you could say that um, it's a university and school one, although that tends to be if you were posting on behalf of your department. Um, in all honesty, for us, I would just leave it as default, so that way you don't get categorized into anything. Some of the other things that you can personalize in here, you'll see that it asks, it allows you to connect some of your information in here. So if you did want to include some of your professional information in here in terms of where you're located, you could add in that information. Once you've done that, you can go back under the account settings and you'll see it allows you to customize certain things. So under the social, it will allow you to connect your Facebook if you haven't done so. And again, that's not one I would necessarily recommend. One that's worth looking at is under the email notifications because by default, it's going to send you an email when anything happens. So um, that might be something that you want to find out these things. Um, if that's not the case, you can just uncheck all of these. So you can sort of set that up based upon your preferences. Hopefully at this point you don't have any users that you've already blocked. Uh, just setting up your account. And then under content you can see uh, you have the ability to set some of your defaults. So uh, in my case I'm going to set my default language to English and I'm going to set my default license to all rights reserved because I want to maintain full copyright of anything that I post. Although you do see there are several Creative Commons items that are available to you. Um, and every time you upload something, you have the ability to change that. It's just this is what the default will be whenever you go to upload something. So let's go and save those. And if I go back to my profile here now, you'll see my pictures there. It tells you a little bit about the information here in my LinkedIn profile. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to go in and let's upload a presentation. So and you see I clicked on upload and it basically wants me to go and either upload something from these types of files or I can upload it from a cloud-based service. So if I've got something in Dropbox or Google Drive or Box or iCloud or even within my Gmail, I can upload directly from there. Now in this case, I've got it on my computer, so I'm just going to go select files to upload. And I'm going to navigate to where this is, and then we'll upload the file. So once you've started to upload the file, you'll have the ability to put in some information here. And typically speaking, it'll just pull out whatever the title is of the actual file and uh, put that in there. So um, let me go and actually just add in some of this stuff first. So I'm going to say that this is in healthcare. And then in the description, personally, what I try to do is I, because I use this as a place where I post things that I've presented at conferences, I'll actually put the APA reference here for the item that I'm presenting. So as you can see here, here's the full APA reference. And then in the title up here, I will just put the 
title of the actual presentation and I will go through and actually turn it into title capitalization here as opposed to the APA capitalization and I can put in some tags in here so I'm gonna say nursing nursing leadership um, collaboration and these are basically just ways in which it'll help folks find this presentation if they were searching using these tags and then once I'm done I basically just hit publish and you will see here it appears now one of the things I always do once this happens once I get it done is I actually go in and take a look at the privacy settings because personally I do not like allowing people to clip my slides and I don't like people downloading my slides um, I like them being able to view them and see them but I don't want them to be able to make essentially copies unless they were to do a screen capture in which case I have no control over that but for the things that I do have control over I like to prevent that use so I'll go in and change that and then when I come back here now you don't have a user wouldn't have the option to clip a slide or to um, download the slides that are here but I could still go in and actually embed these things into Canvas or into a website. So and then let's go back and take a look at our profile again. So you can see now when we look at the profile, you see that there, here's our presentation. And here's all of our information over here. And no one has followed me in the last 10-15 minutes, so I still have no followers. but as you start to build things here what you'll find is that uh, people will find things and they will um, add you to theirs so you'll find that you'll get some followers here as people start finding your work and the more the things that you post here the easier it will be for folks to find you so that's a basic presentation on how to set up your slideshare account and then to get things added to it